right, so welcome back. Um, we're going to start using JMP now to do our hypothesis testing. So in studio, we'll explain in a little bit more detail um, what hypothesis tests are, why we do them, and more importantly, how to interpret them. We find that people focus a little too much on what the p-value numerically is and not necessarily what it conceptually is. And this is not just me talking about students, I'm talking about many researchers, uh, probably even myself included, have fallen victim to the p-hacking, which is trying to find significance by doing statistics or experiments such that you get significant p-values back. Um, so we'll talk about that in studio. What we'll do in this video is we'll take our investigating variation lab mock data uh, and show you how to do the Tukey Honest Significance Difference Test, or the Tukey HSD. Um, so the first step whenever we're doing one of these hypothesis tests is we need to identify which test to use. We'll be providing you with this Tech Manual Statistics tree, uh, which is a little flowchart to guide you through selecting a hypothesis test. So first, just what is the purpose of your analysis? Uh, we want to look at the, is there a difference between these groups of plants? So we're testing the differences between groups, which is continuous versus nominal data. How many groups are we testing? We're testing four. That branches us into this one-way ANOVA. Uh, we're going to skip directly to doing a Tukey HSD, mostly because we no longer need to do this ANOVA and then a postdoc test. These statistics packages uh, are not, this is a, a leftover from before when people had to do statistics by hand. So with that, we have this data that we collected in the field. We went out, we measured four plants. Uh, in the data input video, we took this data, we brought it into JMP, and we used the table stack feature to make it into a species column versus a leaf length column. So this, we are ready to go. So the first thing you want to do whenever you're going to make a hypothesis test is you need to visualize the data. So we're just going to go into Graph Builder. We're going to put our species on the X or Y. And I'm just going to real quick and dirty make a bar graph. Um, so this is our data set. We can see that there might be some difference between Alcinium and Fahardium and Jordanicus and Preceptoria. Within Jordanicus and Preceptoria, these are almost exactly identical. So there's probably not a significant difference here. So we're more concerned about these three groupings. Uh, I would normally go through and make these pretty. Uh, so I'm just going to do that real quick. And then we will customize our error bar, which we'll put on the bottom. Make it size 3, and we will make it a relatively dark black. All right, bam, bam, bam. Hide the legend, hide the title, hide the footer. And then we'll use a very well annotated or figure captioned thing for this. All right, so we've got a graph. Now we need to do the actual analysis. So we're going to go to this fit y by x or analyze fit y by x. Uh, you see here we have our columns on the side here. We have the, all these factors. Um, we're just going to put our species in the x column and our leaf length in the y column. Notice that this locks us into a one-way analysis. This is what we want. Um, and we'll just hit OK. So now we've got our initial window here. There's not a lot going on here. Kind of just a dot plot of what happened. I'm going to hold my Alt key. Uh, this is the same key on both Windows and Mac. Uh, if not, it's the key next to your spacebar on the left. I'm going to click the red arrow to bring up this menu. So this is all of the options in the arrow. If I don't click Alt, I get these one at a time, but I'm going to adjust a bunch of these. Let me turn on my All Paired 2 key HST. I don't necessarily mean any of these, though. Maybe I'll turn on Means and Standard Deviation. Just to see, I don't need non-parametric. Non-parametric multiple. I don't need the robust quantiles. I like to turn on compare density, so I'll turn that on. 
I don't need to save anything. I'm going to turn on the box plots. I'm going to turn off grand mean. Grand mean is this line that goes across here. This is an average of all of the data points, and I don't want that. It just clouds my graph. I'm going to turn off x-axis proportional. That changes how wide these are. So if I had a different number of samples here, different sample sizes, these would expand or shrink based on how large those are. I'm going to turn on these points jittered. I like to jitter my points. Uh, and then I don't need anything else here. Bada bam. So this is just a visual representation of, again, what we looked at. We've got the box plot. We've got this visual output of the two keys. This is for your eyes only, basically. Do not put this in a report. But basically, if these circles overlap, that means these data sets are closer together. You'll notice that these two data set, or, that these two circles are completely concentric. Uh, so these are probably not different. Uh, we have the means report if we want to look at that, the mean standard deviation. Uh, this is just good to have these numbers available to look at because this gives you context. So you can see the means of these two are identical. These guys are 7 and 8 just comparatively. Um, so let's see what happens. So our first thing we want to look at, or that we'll look at here, is this ordered differences report. So this compares every possible combination of groups one at a time. So we have Fahardium versus the Preceptoria, Fahardium versus Jordanicus, Alicinium, Preceptoria, etc. Uh, and it gives it a p-value. So this says the probability that these two groups are the same is less than or equal to whatever value is here. So this is saying that there's a 1 out of 10,000 chance that we just happened to pick Fahardinium and Preceptoria plants that have these leaf lengths on average uh, based on where they are and what their standard deviation is. Uh, and again, we do that for all of these. We notice that the Fahardium and Alicinium, we have maybe an 8 out of 10,000, so a little better. Uh, whereas the Jordanicus and the Preceptoria are not at all different. These are almost certainly identical. Um, there's one caveat I want to mention. We'll talk about this a little more in depth, and we'll keep harping on it as we go through the semester. Just because your p-value is really small doesn't mean the effect you're looking at is very big or very important. Uh, and conversely, if your p-value is smaller or larger than someone else's p-value, that doesn't necessarily mean that your result is better than theirs. Um, so we're not going to focus on the quality of the p-value or the magnitude of the p-value. We're really just going to focus on, is it significant? Is it less than 0.05 or not? And if it's more than less than 0.05, that's okay. We're not going to dig too deeply into what that means. So here, if we do a lot of comparisons, here we only had four plants, so we only had six comparisons. But if we have, you know, one or two more plants, these grow exponentially. Uh, and it can become very confusing to read, so we get this connecting letters report instead. So the connecting letters report assigns a unique letter to every group that is unique in its own way. So here, the hardinium is not similar to any other groups, it gets its own letter. Alankinium, also not similar to any other groups, gets its own letter. Whereas Jordanicus and Preceptoria are similar to each other, but dissimilar to the other groups. So they get their own letter, and they both get it. Uh, this can be convenient. Depending on your audience, you can put connecting letters on your graphs. That'll make their life a little bit easier to understand. Uh, but if you are going to a very technical audience, I think they prefer putting little asterisks and stars over things, which we'll show how to do. Uh, lastly, I like to put this compare density here. So this is basically a histogram of your data, and this, I think, visually shows pretty well how your data overlap or don't overlap. Um, unfortunately, I have no idea what this axis means, because if you integrate underneath one of these, it does not add up to one. Um, so take that with a grain of salt, but I think it's a cool visual. All right, so now that I know my significance here, I need to communicate that to my audience. And we really don't want to bomb them with this, like, table of p-values like I did in the 
pre-lab reading for investigating variation because that's hard for an audience to interpret. A technical audience probably that's interested in your question might want to know the exact tables there, but generally we want to annotate this visually. So we're going to go back to our graph and we're going to add significance annotations to this. Um, in order to do that, we're going to need a lot of white space above our graph. So I'm going to change my axis here. So it actually goes to 12.5. That'll give me all this white space here that I can draw in. Uh, and then I want to make sure that this is going to be legible when I make it. So JMP has some default settings. Uh, I'm going to go through and change them all here. Preferences. I'm going to go into the preferences. And in here, you can change the font, and you can change all of these defaults. So if you get tired of changing these every single time you make a graph, change these. Uh, and I will probably do that after this video because these settings did not save when I upgraded to the next JMP. All right, so I'm just going to make all of my fonts here 12. Uh, I'm going to make my my axis is a little small. I'm going to make them font size 11. And that's normal. Typically, axes fonts are a little bit smaller than their labels. All right, so now this looks good, very vibrant. I can see what's happening in a perfect world. I'd figure out how to add a border around this because I think that would make this look a lot cleaner. Uh, but I'm satisfied. So now we're going to file, export, image, PNG. Next, we're going to save it to our computer somewhere. Uh, and I am doing it this way for, mm, I guess, not any particular reason. You could screenshot this. It looks like it saves it one-to-one. -one. Now I'm going to go into a Google drawing that I've made on my drive in my lab notebook. I'm going to upload this file. And then I'm just going to put it in the corner. I'm going to shrink this so that it outlines it. Now, I want to put annotations on these. So at the core of this, all you do is you just draw a line between two things that are significant. And then above that line, you put a text box with a star in it. And this star... You'll put a little figure caption under this. Uh, I'll do it right here, but this is not like, you should put your figure caption in using Google Docs or whatever processor you prepare your final pictures in, uh, or slides if this is for a poster. Don't embed it in the image because this won't be easily editable. So this would be figure one. I'd give it a title. So leaf lengths of various species of plants. Um, this reminds me that your plant species should be italicized. So these fonts, you should make italics. Um, and then you would re-export this and put them here. I like to make my title bold. But I like to, I mean, you should make your title bold. Uh, Titles need to be complete, informative, and concise. And by titles, I mean figure captions. So figure caption has a title that's part of complete. Concise, I'm going to make sure it's not too long. Informative, I'm going to tell you what we see here. Um, so I actually don't think this needs anything specific in it. So I'm just going to move on to the statistics. So we state what the statistic is, 2 keys HSD, n equals 25 for all groups. And then we tell what the star value is. So star is going to be p less than 0 0.05. Uh, and here we could even go farther. We could do like star star 0.01 because our values span both 0.01 and 0.001. So why don't we do that? We'll be super fancy. And I'm going to put these in parentheses. 
Sometimes, depending on what you do, you might need more information than this. All right, so now we're going to bring up our statistical data here. We know that everything except, actually everything here falls under the 0.001, so I'm going to get rid of bada bam, and get a triple star on it. And we know that everything we make is going to have triple star. Now this here says that the difference between alkanium and fahardinium, according to a Duke HSD, has a probability of 1 in 10,000, or even less than this. We, you know, we know there's a third zero there, but 1 in 1,000 chance that this is whatever. And you want to be conservative with these, so you know, we're not going to worry about anything that's greater than this. Now I'm going to show you a neat little trick. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to move it up and line it up. So now I have an exact same size line there. I'm going to put one over here too. This will help with visual consistency among my stuff. Uh, and then I'm actually going to copy paste this. All right, so we know that the difference between these guys is actually not significant. So we're going to write NS here. And we're going to append this so that it's obvious, non-significant. And then I drew these lines where I did for a reason. And unfortunately, it looks like my text is going to be in my way here. So I'm just going to select these and move them down a little bit. What I want to do here is I want to say that the difference between these guys, that I don't have to draw 100 different significance values here. And then this is where Google Drawing is a little annoying. It doesn't have snaps, so we're going to have to manually drag these and just make sure they're good enough. They don't have to be absolutely perfect. Though if you want to make them absolutely perfect, kudos to you. You can hold the Shift key while you're dragging things to make sure you keep them aligned. Uh, and if you decide you have to, err on the side of... Uh, underlapping things rather than overlapping because overlapping is very obvious whereas underlapping can be forgiven. All right, so whoop. now we select these. We'll put these back up here. Do then we'll copy this. Put it in the center, drop it on that line, and now we have this very lovely annotated graph telling us that, okay, these two are different, these two are different, and these guys are different from these guys. Um, and this is a, you know, we're not going to go too extreme on you if you place a ton of significant bars on here. Um, but if you're going to put a lot of significant bars in there, then I do think it's important that you put a second line down here that says something like differences not emphasized or non-significant. Uh, or alternatively, communication's key. Just make it clear what you're signifying is significant. All right, then you can file, download that as a JPEG, a PNG, drop it in your PDF, and you're good to go. Uh, and again, remember, don't put this into your final product. All right, so that's kind of the entire process of how we go from raw data to an annotated significant graph. Uh, this was a little more in-depth than previous videos, so I apologize for the length. But thank you for watching, and I hope these help.